بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین بیسکلی اگین اپس آئی اوپن دا رانگ پریزنٹیشن سوری فار دیٹ آئی ہیو ٹو ڈو اٹ اگین میرا خیال تھا میں نے پریزنٹیشن صحیح والی کھولی ہے لیکن وہ صحیح والی نہیں کھولی ہے لیٹ می اوپن اپ دی اوکے دس ون Okay. I hope you people can see the screen, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, basically, pharmacogenomics. Uh, about 80 years ago, somebody came to me in the clinic and they told me that they are getting a test for people. And those tests cost about 100,000 rupees. And the person would be able to know which drug will suit him and which drug won't suit him. So that was about eight years ago in Pakistan. This means that now the things should have improved furthermore. I don't know what is the situation now, the availability of these tests in Pakistan, but I'm still stuck. And I want some genetic studies in Pakistan. I have to send those patients or people to some specific places. Sometimes they get the test done. Some, most of the time they don't get the test done. So it's expensive domain and it costs a lot, but at least you people should be able to understand what is it. When we talk about genetic polymorphism, It includes both the things, pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. And you people all know that pharmacokinetic is associated with absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. And pharmacodynamics includes receptors, ion channels, enzymes, and immune system. So pharmacodynamic, we not only incorporate the receptors, We incorporate the ion channels, enzyme system, and immune system as well. Recently, when I last time came to Pakistan, I presented on uh, microbiomes. Now, microbiomes are basically kind of a, a material, DNA material, or you can say bacteria, which is present in our system, and it helps in absorption and mobility of various products in our gut system. So the immune system is associated with that and there is lots of, there are lots of studies now happening to understand the role of microbiomes as far as the psychotropic drugs are concerned, how they go into our system and how they impact our system. And definitely if we know about these things, the management of the patients gets much easier and they will show the good response and outcome to the treatment. And if we won't tap this area, we will still be stuck at the same point. Majority of the people in Pakistan, again, they don't acknowledge psychiatry because of multiple reasons. One of the reason is that we can manipulate organize streamline and correct our the way we live yes it is true but how much motivation is there to achieve those things around us that variates and it is dependent on most of the time on our genetic material which are we we are inheriting from our ancestors my father my mother and my grandparents and my great grandparents, they have all contributed to the genes which I'm carrying. And if the gene has the capability of making me an intelligent person, I will flourish in my life. If my genes carries something which unfortunately compromises my motivation, or I have a tendency to have psychiatric morbidity, or I have a tendency to be anxious, sensitive, obsessive person, then things may get compromised. 
So people say the happiness is outside. I, we believe the happiness is inside. And if happiness is inside, this means that whatever processes happening inside this brain at a molecular or genetic level, they play a very vital role in our happiness and future prospects as well. So my relationships, my interactions, my sexual life, my personal life, uh, my food intake, my body metabolism, everything is now set to be pre-planned gen genetic material inside me, which guides me through it. Now, if we believe that, then this means that Allah has given us the things to excel and Allah has given us the things to remain, uh, unfortunately, in a suffering. But this is not like that only. Allah has given us ways to correct the things and we can do that. And now with each passing day, each passing year, the studies in the genetics makes me understand my religion, my faith more rather than I should be compromising it because there are bad questions occurring as well. Rose kahi jane se, raabte badhane se, mohabbatein bhi thakti hain, tohmatein bhi lagti hain. Is liye ye socha hai, fasle hi achche hain. So, thoda Pakistan se dur rehna chak, thodi dir, mohabbat shayad bada jai. Okay, when we are talking about pharmacogenetics and pharmacogenomics, we are talking about certain terminologies. It's a single gene, pathway based or genomic wide. You will read a lot of this word GWAS and GWA. Genomic wide association or genomic wide studies in most of the genetic studies. So genomic wide studies, what are they, how they should be, they are carried out. We will talk about it so, uh, definitely. One thing is genomics. So our genetic material in the form of DNA and RNA is there in the cells. And that genetic material, the DNA and the RNA material, which makes the proteins and the cellular component, has a certain process, process of physiological process of accepting something inside the cell, throwing something out of the cell, uh, making alterations in the chemicals inside the cell, uh, growing cell, deteriorating cell, degenerating cells. Everything is happening because of certain mechanism, physiological processes. Now, this process is called transcriptomics. Transcriptomics. So, the process of all the genetic things coming and out and process involved in it is called transcriptomics. How it is done, when it is done, and the process. So all of the processes. Then metabolomics are, is the metabolism of various chemicals which are occurring at the genetic level, at the cellular level, at the DNA and RNA level, that study is metabolomics. And proteomics is at the level of the protein, the amino acids. So all of these studies are progressing. Previously, we were able to see the cells under the microscope. Now we can see the RNA and DNA materials as well. Well, there are different, definitely methodologies to do that, but it's important. Whenever a patient takes medication, there are majority of the people who are feeling good with the pill, like paracetamol. So majority of the people will take paracetamol and their pain will be gone or their fever will be settling down. But there are some people, when they take paracetamol, they actually have a serious renal shutdown and they can die. So there are people in the community which unfortunately have this problem. And some of the people take Panadol and nothing goes, happens to them. 
the fever never settles down, the pain never goes away, so they have to rely on some other material to do the same. Like a people who uh, can take ibuprofen or something else, which can actually do the same job, but the paracetamol won't do that job for them. This happens with every possible drugs, and this is happening in psychiatry as well. So the risperidone, the magic drug, of the 80s, when we give it to the patient suffering from schizophrenia, majority of the patients do respond to it and they get, do get well. But there are some people who develop severe side effects with risperidone, and there are some people who develop no response to risperidone, despite giving them highest possible tolerable dose, they are not, the schizophrenia is not going away. And this unfortunately makes things more complicated. So this means that the disease in the health is a related process in which we have to understand the target, pathways, compounds involved. <clears throat> and this is the reason when some drugs are given to a person, there are preclinical trials, clinical trials, healthy individuals, and people do get better. Whole of this process, so most of the people, when they come to me, we assess them, we try to give them medication, it corrects the pathology, people do get better. But what happens if it's not happening? Then we must understand that there are multiple other processes involved, which we mentioned earlier as well, like cell lines, cellular processes, uh, again, population who is responding differently, so these are the scenarios where, G, where GWA studies play a wider role. Genetic wide association studies play important role. Na gila kiya, na khafa huye, yuhi raaste me juda huye. Na tu bewafa, na mein bewafa. Jo guzar gaya, so guzar gaya. Tujhe eid baar ho yaki nahi, nahi dunia itni buri nahi. Na malal kar mere saath tha. So let's forget about the past and move forward. So as I was telling you that this, unfortunately, a complicated science is evolving and the psychiatry uh, is one of these speciality where lots of work is going on and there will be a big breakthrough soon. So we will know that uh, understanding the person, person's genes, transcriptomics, proteomics, and metabolomics will give us, if when we we'll understand the person's composition for all of these things, we'll be able to know the right drug for the right person to treat the schizophrenia, which will be much easier job. And unfortunately, the environmental factors have effect on all of them, microbiomes, which are studied now a lot, exogenous substances, lifestyle choices, social interaction. So if I am a person who is very social, outgoing, uh, interacting, talkative, I will have different kinds of cellular things happening inside my cellular system. So the correlation between the cells and my over talkativeness there is a linkage establishing into this system as well. So each and every individual, whatever the lifestyle they have, whatever the microbiome system they have, whatever genomics, transcriptomics, proteomics, metabolomics they are having inside them, if we'll be able to study them, then we'll be able to understand and correct the pathology. If we won't be able to study them, things won't be corrected. So basic of pharmacogenomics is that genomic information is used to study individual responses to the drugs, how I will respond to paracetamol, how I will respond to risperidone. Pharmacogenomics looks at how your DNA affects the way you respond to drugs, and DNA can affect multiple steps in the pro this process to influence how you respond to a drug. It's unfortunately makes no sense, but it has lots of sense. 
So we have drug receptors on the cells. There are many receptors. And if those receptors connect with the drug that you are giving, there will be a strong response. If a person is having few receptors for that specific drug, which is unfortunately, again, as I told you, genomics, metabolomics, proteomics, then person will have a weak response to the drug. If there are no receptor for that drug, there will be no response to the drug. And if there are different type of the receptors, not the way we want the drug to have, a, have an effect, even then the drug won't have any effect. For somebody, lithium 300 milligram could be a high dose. For other people, it could be a very low dose. Why we go for serum lithium levels? The same person, uh, one person is responding to having serum lithium levels of 0.6 to 0.8 at 400 milligram. The other individual will be taking 1200 milligram of lithium and his serum lithium levels will be still point less than 0.6. These variations are because of this thing and this is what we un want to understand. Then drug reuptake. So normal cell, when you give a drug, the drug goes into the intracellular spaces, makes the changes, pharmacodynamics, and then have an effect. But there are possibility that there is decreased or reduced intake of the drug. So drug will build up outside the cell, not inside the cell, and will have a possible, unfortunate, very drastic side effects. So whenever a drug, again, I take a pill, it goes into my stomach, from there, it is absorbed, goes into the liver. There is enzyme system in the liver which breaks down the drug. Now, this is another genetic component. What kind of uh, enzyme system I am having in my hepatocytes which have the capability of breaking down the drug? If I have the appropriate enzyme system, I will break down the drug properly and the normal dose will go into my system and have an impact. If I am a rapid metabolizer, I will break down the drug very quickly and the drug probably won't be able to reach into an effective amount into our system and I won't have the response. There is slow breakdown of the drug and drug accumulates outside the cellular system and there is. So for every individual from mouth to gut, to liver, to brain, this cellular, intracellular component of genes, DNA and RNA is important component to have the drug efficacious. If not, these things won't have an impact. There is another concept which I mentioned earlier as well called SNP, SNPs or SNP single nucleotide polymorphism, frequently called SNPs, are the most common type of genetic variation among the people. So one person may be having one kind of a SNP, another person will be having another kind of the SNP, and the third person will be have another kind of SNP. And one million people will have one million different kind of SNPs as well. There is a possibility. So people are exposed to COVID virus. Some people died because of the complications. Some people develop mild symptoms. Some people develop the symptoms, but they recover. And some people develop the symptoms even after months and months, they were not able to get the taste, but taste of the things back. This is all because of what is happening at genomic level. Each SNP represents a difference in a single DNA building blocking called a nucleotide. For example, a SNP may replace the nucleotide cytosine with the nucleotide thiamine and in a certain way that the DNA changes. So basic DNA remains the same, but one cytosine is replaced by thiamine and the effect changes. So this means that 
millions and millions, billions of SNPs are possible in human body. And this makes us human. Jab lehje badal jayen, to wazahatein kaisi? Nai mayasar ho jayen, to purani chahatein kaisi? Vasal mein guzre lamhe hain, anmol yaadein. Hijr mein sukh khushiyan, rahatein kaisi? SNPs occur normally throughout the person's DNA. They occur almost once in every 1,000 nucleotides on average, which means there are roughly four to five million SNPs in a person's genome. One genome carries four to five million SNPs. And this is the reason why I'm having a mole here. And this is the reason why my voice is like this. This is the reason why my eyes color are like, like this. So there is no individual who can be like me 100%. Since the time this earth came into being, till the time we all will pass in the doomsday. So these SNPs, Allah Ta'ala ne aisa system banaya hai ke koi do individual ek jaise nahi hai. These variations occur in many individuals to be classified as a SNP, a variant is found in at least 1% of the population. There are 600 million SNPs in the population around the world detected so far, so far. So probably we will get more SNPs over the period of time and they will carry different connotations in clinical settings. Most commonly, SNPs are found in DNA between the genes. They can act as a biological markers, helping to locate genes that are associated with the disease. So whenever we say that uh, this biological marker is associated with this gene, like the gene C4896, whatever the number is, is associated with Alzheimer's disease. So unfortunately, 600 million SNPs have been discovered so far. This means out of those 600 million, if the possibility of one SNP is associated more with the Alzheimer's, those all people having the same SNP will develop Alzheimer's one way or the other. So this means that if we are able to understand the SNPs, we'll be able to understand the pathology and we'll be able to correct the SNPs and things will be okay for us. Well, the way we want them to be. When SNPs occur within a gene or in a regulatory region near a gene, they may play a more direct role in disease by affecting the gene's function. SNPs help predict an individual response to certain drugs. Susceptibility to environmental factors such as toxin and developing diseases, SNPs can also be used to track the inheritance of disease associated genetic variants within the family. So there, there, there are trends these days now. People go for genetic studies to understand their inheritance. And there were some very, uh, again, strange news about that as well. Majority of the people in Canada were found to be having their background somewhere in Africa and somewhere in, in the mid, middle of the Europe. And they're probably seven generations have never been to Europe or Africa, but still something was coming up. Now, is it actually a, a crap thing that people are making stand out of it to get the money, or is it really the situation? That is a question, unfortunately, but it will be responded soon. So what is possible? Genomics, what appears to be happening? Transcriptomics, what makes it happen? Proteomics, what is happening? Metabolomics and a phenotype. We have microbiome, environmental factors, uh, and metabolites, proteins, messenger RNA, and the genes. And all of them play vital role. What happens to the drug after its administration? This is a very complicated slide. I had lots of time to understand it. But in simple words, whenever we take a drug, its distribution, absorption, elimination, metabolism, all are linked together and they are linked together through the genes, the RNA and DNAs. We have enterocytes, we have hepatocytes. 
The entire sites have uptake transporters, efflux transporters, bidirectional transporters, and enzyme system. So previously we were just talking about the enzyme system. Now we are talking about bidirectional transporters or efflux transporters or uptake transporters, which play a vital role in actually the metabolism of the drug. So understanding genes would be able to give us more insight, more ideas. Pharmacometabolics investigates an integrated influence of genome, microbiome, and the environment on the drug efficacy and safety. It uses metabolic profiles as markers for therapy responses. Metabotypes can help predict therapy response, explain mechanism of drug action, give insight into the influence of the microbiome on the drug, and it translates to further more things. Drug, lifestyle, age, social interaction, and so many things. Well, that's it for today. Uh, that's That was a small presentation, but I thought it's an important topic. At least six uh, topics, six questions uh, will be there uh, on this topic. One of the question in MCQs, which was recently asked, was actually Manhattan plot. So about two years ago, there was a question in FCPS part in IM model, 